Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. Tonight we're going to be doing another in our songbird series. Uh, we'll be doing Little Gray Tufted Titmouse, uh, the one on the far left, right? Right, sorry, right corner. <laughs> left, right, can't do it. <laughs> no, not in our picture here, yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> got my husband Mark with me tonight. Hey there, everybody. <laughs> Don't argue with me while I'm talking. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to sound professional here. Oh, that's right. Well, you moved it because it was in the center earlier. It was earlier, but I did move it. All right. Sorry. All right. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so here's what we've got going on. We're going to do six canvases. We've got our first two done, uh, the Bluebird and the uh, Western Tanager from last week. Uh, and then we're going to do this little guy that's in the corner here tonight. Uh, and I think we're going to do a Cardinal and a Cedar Wax Wing and then a Bullfinch uh, to finish off our series. So those will be coming up. I'm going to set these aside. of using a five-inch canvas, five-inch square canvases for these. And uh, they are the Frederick's Gallery Wrap 5-inch uh, canvases. And we're going to be doing a giveaway next week um, on Tuesday night. So look for that. Uh, Frederick's has yes. generously, yes, uh, agreed to do another giveaway. So. Except I can't win. Huh? Except I no, can't you can't. Win. Why don't you zoom in here? Or I can. I'm, <clears throat> I'm zooming in. Thank you. Let's go over our colors real quick. Got carbon black, unbleached titanium, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red medium, cadmium yellow medium, yellow oxide, thalo green yellow shade, thalo blue green shade, teal, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. All right. And like I said before, we did a coat, a light coat of the quinacridone magenta. Um, it's a little bit watered down, so it's not full strength because quinacridone can be quite dark to start with and let's draw our little bird here so he is his branch is going to be coming straight up this way and it's right let's see if you marked the thirds it's just on the inside of the this third here so we're going to down this way a little bit at an angle so it's slightly angled this way slight somewhat I'm going to do two, two lines there, and then we're going to do another line, kind of the branches coming up here. There's a little bit of this canvas is in the corner. So this branch is coming down, so I'm just going to put a little bit of a leaf here to kind of finish off that branch. I'm not going to bring it down any farther than that. And then this canvas had its branch coming in this way, so we're going to do a little bit of that. And also, I'm just going to kind of maybe do a small flower here or a little bud and then finish it off with some leaves like that. And then this one we can have, uh, we can have no flowers. We could have something similar to over here. I think I'm gonna do some some kind of apple blossom type flowers. So I'm going to do a little bit open flowers there. Maybe a couple buds. All right. And then for the, our bird, he is going to fit right in here. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to move him over a little bit from where I sketched him. I'm going to put his beak right in here. And his beak is a little bit curved, it's quite small. And you're going to make kind of a diamond shape. And then the head is coming up off of that, sloped back. And then it kind of curves up just a little bit for these feathers that are sticking up. And then it curves back down this way. And then the wing kind of comes in like this. So we're going to do a curved line right here. It comes towards the front. And the tail sections generally are about the same 
size as the wing or maybe a little bit smaller. So, And I'm talking the whole tail. So from here to the rump is going to be about the same distance as the wing section. So there's our tail coming in like this. This flares out a little bit at the end. And then our wing lays on top here. There's a split right here. And it curves around the front. And then the front of the face curves straight down from the beak. And then where it comes to the wing, it starts to curve down and around the body. And then back up to the base of the tail. So the wing comes past this point here where the body meets it. The wing is going to come a little bit past of that mark. And then the leg is coming out at an angle this way and back down to the branch. Right there. And then he's got a little eye right here that's just uh, right above the split in the beak. So if you go straight back from that, the eye is going to set just above that, right almost smack dab in the middle of this head section. And if you do a circle, you should be able to do a circle inside the head. Um, and it should curve up and around that circle section. And then this part curves back here. There's a little black on his forehead, and we're done with his drawing. So he's not too, too Thanks bad. Thanks, everybody, Oops, for joining in tonight. Mind. It was great to have you with us. No? What? I said, Thanks for joining us tonight, everybody. Yeah. It was great to have you with us. Oh, you're like, sure. subscribe. <laughs> you said we were done. Done with the drawing part, hon. Well, I guess this is a painting channel, not a drawing channel. Right. Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit more here. I promise I'll stay on camera. <coughs> I'm scoop up a little bit of my unbleached titanium. And I want to do the background of this guy a little bit pink. So pink and reds. We're, we've got the blue coming in from this one and the yellow's coming in from this one. So I think I want to pull the blue in and fade it over to more pinks on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and start on this side with the pinks. That's just quinacridone magenta with that unbleached titanium, leaving a lot of the background color showing through. And I'm just dabbing the paint on. I don't have a whole lot on my brush at any one time, but I am putting on kind of thicker than I normally would. Let's go ahead and grab the Vela Blue. That'll mix in, make kind of a purpley color. We'll put that in around our bird. And I'm tapping in so that I don't have like a solid line when I go around my bird. Because I want a little bit of that red to show through. So let's go ahead and do the side here. I'm not sure if I like this color yet. We'll see. Well, you're just getting to know it, so. Right. <laughs> you know, take some time. I just started with it, so. Yeah. You don't want to rush into things. <laughs> I don't think I wanted a purple, that's all. Hmm. So. But it's tricky since we're transitioning to blue to keep it from going purple. It's pretty much going to go purple. <laughs> That's pretty much what's going to happen. So we'll deal with it. What are you laughing at? No, I can't say it. What? Nothing. Okay. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight, everybody. We appreciate you being here with us. I'm a little bit off this, our game tonight. This bird series. Mm -hmm. The third of six, right? Yes. And so uh, putting together, would you call it a collage? No, it's it's a... Well, no, it's just a series. 
series. Okay. Because they could be put together or they don't have to be. They can be. Right. Yeah. Spread out. That would be good. Give everyone to a different person in your family. And then when you come Ooh. together at the holidays, they can, you know, yeah. they're like a secret society. <laughs> birds, they kind of, you know, have superpowers when they come together. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know, honey. No, it, it could happen. All right. <laughs> I added a little bit cadmium red down here to this one, to this corner. Here. I'm not even going there with you. That. Okay, somebody wanted to know what the advantage was to painting the background the magenta color that you that did. That question every time we do this. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It just shows through a little bit. It bleeds through. Uh, it um, gives it just a little bit different color. The top colors, it changes the top colors a little bit. And it, when you see it peek through, it gives it a little bit more vibrancy. That's all. But you don't have to do it if you don't like it or you just want to do it more normal or whatever yeah it's just it's just a undercoat choice you know but seems to be freaking a lot of people out so I don't know <laughs> I get that question every time it just kind of like, oh my gosh <laughs> it's counterintuitive it seems like huh it just doesn't seem like it would be there you know? right like we've said before you know when i see something blue oh it's blue you just pick out a blue right and paint it blue yeah true well true. no i mean you have to really look at it and see that there are layers and depth underpainting is just a really good practice to get into when you're doing if you're really serious about you know doing um you know more fine art type work it's just a really common practice with um artists and it um it gives your paintings a little bit more depth a little bit more richness um in general so that's just that's just all it is you know it just kind of is uh i don't know so the question just came up about traceable so we'll yes. do that part right now traceables okay. are available yes. on patreon down below there's a link and uh, for a dollar per month yes. you get access to all of the traceables that for the paintings Angela done since February 2017. Mm -hmm. Unlimited downloads. We just ask that you don't post them on social media like Pinterest and things like that because it's not fair to everybody else who's contributing and supporting the channel that way. Right. That's a good job. This is a good job. And then there's a $5 level give you access to a monthly bonus video for Patreons. Mm-hmm. And, then you get the and the traceables. You get the finished images from Ooh, all the paintings. Nice. That little. <clears throat> okay, I'm just adding a little bit more white as I'm moving this way. So, this area was unbleached, or uh, the the um, ultramarine blue and phthalo blue together, and then white, and then now I'm. I'm just going to put a couple little buds over here. I don't think I want to put a whole flower. I'm going to do like that. Okay, we're getting there. You really don't have to blend too much with these. It's the nice thing about doing these transitions between colors, you can kind of just, as long as you overlap them a little bit, you don't even really have to blend the colors necessarily with one another. You can just kind of lay that color on top of the of the blue um, and then a little bit of the blue on top of the other color and it'll visually blend it without actually mixing the colors together, which might not be a you know, something that you want to do. Like if you don't want purple up here, we can just do blue and then do the pink next to it and then put a little bit of the blue on the pink side and a little bit of the pink on the blue side and it'll blend them. Let's grab a little teal and do some teal over around his face. And then up here we're going to do just a little bit of yellow coming down from this side, but I'm going to put teal first, down first. 
You notice I'm being kind of sloppy. It's kind of deliberate, just sort of leaving that pink showing through. Just small book dabbing brush strokes. That'll give you that kind of out of focus look that we're kind of going for. Here, let's grab some yellow. The bokeh effect. That's one thing I know about photography. Yes. So how are you doing there today, babe? I'm doing all right. I got to a late start here, but <laughs> sorry, you kind of threw me off, but I'm we okay were, now. We were lazy today. We were. We didn't. I didn't prep very well before the show, so I realized about 15 minutes before we were starting that I really didn't know what I was painting tonight, so it was kind of... Yeah, she left it up to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mark said he wanted to paint this one because it was fun to say. <laughs> so it's a tufted ornament mouse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're keeping a G. <laughs> Keep it PG. Yep. <laughs> Grabbing some of the yellow oxide now. More of that white. And then she asked me to help her get the paints out and I well I froze so yeah he didn't I put just, it he wouldn't put them on the palette oh, he just oh, opened them all up for me oh I know better <laughs> I just yeah I just <laughs> I really loosened, didn't save me any time <laughs> at all <laughs> I loosened the tops but I was not gonna try to put them on <laughs> okay. there because I would not put them in the right order okay all right I wouldn't put it enough out all right all right all right <laughs> probably right it's probably a smart move I mean, we've been married 30 years. I'm, I'm smarter Great. now. I'm much smarter now than I was back then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, blending that yellow down. And you can see how I've still got that blue in my brush. So as I'm getting to some of these areas where the yellow's gone, it's turning it green, which is great. It's kind of blending in, giving me another color to work in to my canvas here. Grab a little bit more of that teal. Put some of that up here. Just mainly looking to make sure that where these meet, they're they're the same color. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that phthalo blue and get some white. And make a color similar to that. There we go. And just put a little bit of it over here. So that when they hang together, if, when they're sitting together, they it makes sense that there one looks like it's kind of bleeding into the next one. See that? And then that color is pretty close, so I don't have to do anything down there. I'm going to go ahead and put some of this blue over here, though. I feel like it could use some of it. Today is Mark's birthday. I don't know. I think we said that. Happy birthday to Mark. Yes, many people in chat have already said happy birthday. Have expressed their happy birthday wishes. Nice. We just had a, kind of a lazy day today. Didn't really do much. Mm -hmm. Mark went to the DMV this morning, which was exciting. Oh, yeah. That's right. Went to the DMV. There's the... like, what, 14 people and one person helping everybody? Yep. Yep. That's how. Things are working well in our government. Government, government at work. Yeah, there. Efficiency there. <laughs> Saving money. OK. 
right, so just adding white as I'm getting closer to this corner here. Just a transition there, and I'm going to just throw a few of these darker blue dabs over the top there to blend them. See that? Okay, it's looking good. So, yep. Didn't really do a whole lot today. The boys are going to be cooking dinner during the show, so that should be interesting. So if you hear a smoke alarm going off, <laughs> we might have to cut this short. Just saying. <laughs> it's just funny when, you know, Jordan is, what, 25 now? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to, I want you guys to cook dinner for us while we're during the show. And he's like, uh, No. And I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> you can read the recipe. Uh, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Did we have two kids by the time I was 25? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. I'm going to grab some yellow now or green, phthalo green and work it into my yellow there. We'll make some of these green leaves coming down from this guy. And I'm going to add a little bit of the phthalo blue to the phthalo green there to make that turquoise color that's in this one up here. And I'm dabbing it on so it's not perfectly situated there. Just a little indication. I'm going to put a little bit of that brown going towards the corner. That's the unburnt umber. And grabbing a little bit of the unbleached titanium. We'll add a little bit of that to it as well. Okay. So there's the end of that branch. This one's ended here. So when we do these, these ones over here, we may have a couple more. But I think that that should be the end of the holly berries ones. And if you wanted to get fancy, you could maybe put another leaf right in here or something like that, maybe. Bring that stem down. Maybe do one on this side too. Am I on camera? Yes, I am. Just for fun, you don't have to do that on the sides, but it's kind of fun to just sort of continue it around. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. And that'll be that. Okay, let's do these ones. These ones were a little bit more of a yellow leaf. And they were kind of turned on themselves a little bit more than the ones up here. Very similar though. Let's grab some of the yellow oxide. Do some Grab some yellow that, or white there and make it a little bit brighter. Can they see okay? I don't what think anybody's think? really watching. Oh, really? Okay. Mm, we're just chatting. Everybody's just chatting? Right. Yeah. Good to know. It looks good. Good enough? Mm -hmm. All right. It's mm -hmm. Close enough. You're seeing mostly on camera. Burnt umber and quinacridone magenta. With this stem here. Make sure they kind of meet up there. Yeah. 
Macrodome magenta and white. I'm going to do a couple buds here. From this flower. A little bit of white liquid acrodone. Spray my paints there so they stay moist. So no benzamidazolone? And I've got the... Uh, I've got the angle brush now. I didn't mention that before. Benzamidazolone. Uh, I wasn't thrilled with the opacity of it. I liked the... It was too transparent. It wasn't covering well for me, so I went back to the cadmium. There we go. Just a little. Maybe we do one down here, too. I mean, I'll probably use it again somewhere, but I just... For now, I'm not. I'm going to use up my cadmiums. And then maybe I'll pull it out again. Okay, so let's make the stem on this one a different color too. So let's do how about kind of a gray blue. We'll do un burnt umber and un. Ultramarine blue, a little bit more on the blue side. It's pretty dark. Just doing all the stems a little bit different colors so that they kind of, I don't know, they're just a little bit different. Oh, we got a good art question here. Okay. So, uh, do you find it hard to match mixed colors that you've done before? Match mixed colors? Yeah, so like how you're doing here, you had one canvas already done, and now you're trying to mix almost the same color. Um, n no, but it, it takes a while to kind of get used to your colors and kind of understand which colors are, uh, you know, lean a little bit more red or or lean a little bit more blue or whatever you know there's uh there's reds that are more orange and reds that are more purple um so it kind of helps if you sort of know that going into it and then you can kind of uh look at your your blue you know in this case the blue uh and say okay that's kind of a it's not a green blue necessarily it's more of a medium blue it's not it's not super purple, so I'm going to start with the two blues that are opposite the phthalo blue that's on the green side and the ultramarine blue that's on the purple side and mix those together. And then kind of I can go back and forth to kind of edit uh, and get them a little bit closer to where I want them to be. Um, but <clears throat> one of the things that, that you can do uh, is is lay your mixed color next to your color that, um, so like say with this blue, um, you think about the, the two colors that are on opposite sides of the color wheel or opposite sides of the, either side of it. So I get the color wheel off. So you would look at it and say, okay, You'd lay down your color that you've mixed next to this and you'd say, is my, is this color more green or is this color more purple? And then that way, you know, I need to add more green if it's closer to this color and I need to add more purple if it's closer to this color. Does that make sense? Or, you know, more of a purpley blue. Um, and that way, uh, I don't know, that's a good, good way of doing it is... looking at the two colors on the, the that are just opposite each other from the color that you're going for 
and then you can kind of sway it one way or another a little bit easier. And just adding white to my gray here that I mixed and adding it in the middle of my stem, dabbing it on. Not really straight lines, just kind of dabbing motion. Get a little highlight on it. I like that color. I think it's going to be good. bird a little bit. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just use this gray that I mixed up because the, the gray in the tufted titmouse is, is kind of a blue gray. So I think it'll work with this color that we did for the stem. That color wheel. Yes. Where do they get one? Um, I had the, it's in my Amazon store. Oh, so if they go okay. to the Amazon link, the uh, I'm going to go check just, it out real quick. Just below, yeah, in the description there's there's a link and uh, it's called the Creative Color Wheel. So, okay, let's go ahead and start filling in his face. So, I'm going to use the kind of medium color to start with. And we can darken it up in places. As we go. Just dabbing with the tip of the brush create those small brush strokes that I'm going for and I am kind of dabbing it in the direction um, that the feathers are growing so it's kind of giving me a little bit of that feather feel I'm not really painting in feathers necessarily this is white here added to it it's more white around the eye Coming down off the wing there and in front. Can you zoom in, hon? I feel like it's a little bit far away. Yeah, I zoomed out when you're using the color wheel. Okay. a little bit of black mix a little bit of that gray with it we'll use it right here on the forehead it kind of comes back at an angle a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and kind of outline the bird just slightly because it sort of disappearing against that backdrop there we go here's our curved beak if you want to, you could use a little bit smaller brush. So I might switch to my number one round here. And these are Princeton brushes, by the way. I didn't mention that. But they're our brush sponsor. They're awesome brushes. And these are all down in my store on Amazon as well. And also on thebrushguys.com. They might be a little bit cheaper on the Brush Guys website. Probably are quite a bit cheaper, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, the Amazon brushes tend to be a little bit more expensive. And the link to the Brush Guys is down in the description as well. And I have a whole list of all my recommended brushes on their website. And if you use the code Angela Fine Art, you get an extra 5% off. So it's a good deal. And they're great to work with. All right, so I grabbed a little bit of that lighter color, and now I'm going to highlight the beak on the top just a little bit. There. And then kind of draw a little bit right there where the 
separation happens. Grab a little bit more of that gray, kind of make a, a in-between color between that light highlight color and the dark black of the beak to kind of fill it in a little bit. There we go. Gonna go with a little bit darker black right there in the eye. Okay, so we've had some questions about paints. Uh-huh. And so... I'm going to use this black under here. I'll let everybody in chat know which paints you use. Okay. And then that spurned the question about, so if there's a heavy body, is there... Are craft paints consider a soft body or... They're fluid. Just a fluid? Mm-hmm. Okay. Soft body would be, or kind of medium body would be like a basic student acrylic. So like uh, Liquitec Basics or... One of those. Okay. Um, and I have some new paints that I'll be pulling out uh, from Amsterdam. They sent me some new paints, and also the brush guys are carrying DecoArt uh, acrylics now too. So not not the regular acrylics, but the more they're a, they're a more heavy body kind of medium body paints. So I'm going to be testing those on Facebook next week. Ooh, um, nice kind of doing a head-to-head -head and see which ones, you know, if I like any of them compared to the heavy body acrylics. Some used to paint with the heavy body acrylics, so these are these are all uh, more of a medium, medium to soft body acrylics. So the craft paints are definitely more fluid, and they're not going to be as, um, as pigmented, so you're not going to get the brighter, co bright colors. They're ha they have a lot more of the of the filler, which is the acrylic polymer, and it can be whitish. So it just basically dulls all of the paints just a little bit. So this is kind of a color in between this dark gray and our and our black here. So we're just gonna dab on some of this on our feather, on our tail here and wings. So the advice that we normally give, and you may have just said this, I apologize, I was looking for another question. Mm -hmm. Uh, is to get the best paint that you can afford. Yeah, get get the best you know brushes, best paints. I mean, you'll get better quality. You'll get mm -hmm. better results. Um, I think a student body paint is uh, perfectly fine for a beginner. Mm -hmm. I, I I have no problem with the Liquitex Basics and those kind of paints. Those are usually what I have my students get because the heavy body acrylics are really expensive and the professional quality yeah. ones. <laughs> and you don't want to you know you could waste. A lot of paint when you're, for, you know, for when you're first starting out, you're gonna have, um, you're gonna be using more paint than once you get a little bit farther along. Okay, so I did the light color that was the same as this, and then I did this color, and then I added these two together to get this kind of medium color in between, and I'm just dabbing it on to do that transition, and I'm not really putting in the wing feathers. I'm just, you can see, I'm just kind of indicating the direction that they're going with that brush, those brush strokes, and dabbing them on. So we're getting a little bit of highlighting, but I'm not going into a lot of detail because um, we want to keep it kind of that soft focus like we did on these other ones. So kind of keeping it in that sort of impressionist type style. I'll grab a little bit of the darker gray and put it under the chin and under the belly right here. A little bit. I like this gray bird. He's so cute. So these ones are really, really animated too at the bird feeder. They're they are real fast. They they kind of flit around real fast. They come in and out. They're like they don't stick around very long. Mm -hmm. They're kind of nervous, you know. They're like, what's that? What's that? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for the cat. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it when the cat's out there. Yeah. <laughs> so, but back to the paints. Okay. I, I think if it was me, I would feel like if I was a beginner uh -huh. and I had just spent. Twenty dollars on a tube of paint. I would just feel a lot of pressure on myself right. to do like a really good job and not use a lot, and right. then, and then get frustrated with myself and just you know just the I don't know the the stress I guess. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So you know don't do that to yourself. Right, painting right. should be fun and enjoyable. Yeah, you know so agreed. Get in there. 
Agreed. Okay, so this gray and the background color are almost the same. So what I'm gonna do is put in a little bit brighter color. I can go darker too, but I think I'm gonna, uh, I think I'm gonna go brighter since this dark black, you can't really get much blacker than black, right? Um, so I'm gonna go for a little bit lighter blue. So I'm just gonna mix up some of that blue that was right here and go for like one shade a little bit lighter just to put under his chin a little bit. And I'm just going to tap it in and bring it down like that. I may need to blend it in with some of my other colors, but I'm just going to kind of tap it in first. And see now you can see him. See how much difference that makes. Um, and now we're going to do the same thing back here. A little bit more of that brighter blue. Just dabbing it on. If it, if you need to, you can always go back in with your teal and do a few dabs kind of over the top. They don't, just don't go all the way to the bird. You can still have those colors in there. You just, you know, you can just kind of blend this lighter color in. There we go. Now he's kind of popping out a little bit more for us. I think that's a little bit better. I'll spray my paint, see if I can keep them from drying out on me. They're just trying to dry. And I'm going to grab some of the burnt sienna, a little bit of white. And I'm going to mix that with the gray because it's not quite. So, not too much white. I want it pretty dark. There we go. And there's a little bit of this color right up underneath his feathers right there. Might go a little bit darker even. Just get some straight burnt sienna. Go right up under there, just dab it on. There we go. And then I'm just gonna kinda pull it down, dab it. Kinda blend it in a little bit right there. That's better. Okay, let's grab a little bit more of the burnt umber and ultramarine blue mix and I want to go back in and darken up this whole area right here and I'm just dabbing with my tip of my brush there's a little bit of dark right here Good. I might put a little bit of shadow right there. And then there's a little bit of, I'm just going to put a few little dots right here. There's a little bit of, maybe not that much, a little bit of white. There's a little bit of a kind of a line that comes down right there. Just want to indicate that. Grab a little bit more white on the tip of my brush here. I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight on the eye. Going to tap it off and then get a little bit more. I did kind of a, like a semicircle and then I'm going to do a dot. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to use the white but a little bit brighter just around the eye there just a few little spots there what were you saying? we need your pro tip on how not to okay. overload paint onto your brush you people have are using a lot of paint and they're not sure 
So do you have any tips? Um, I use, if you look at my paper towel, if I feel like I've got too much paint, you know, especially after mixing a color, a lot of times I'll wipe it a little bit on my paper towel to get off the extra um, before I go to the canvas. So that's a good habit to get into is just kind of have your paper towel handy and, and um, you know, pay attention to how, how thickly you're loading your brush. Um, and if it feels like it's a little bit too thick or you have a bunch of paint, you know, stuck off to one side, you can just kind of tap it off, you know, just lightly on the paper towel and that'll kind of get a little bit more regular uh, for you. So that's just a good habit to get into. Okay, how about a tip for selling? I think I want some burnt sienna on this rut, or this right here people are learning and they're becoming better in their painting and they uh -huh. would like to know any suggestions or tips when you're starting to uh i did a whole art chat on that on facebook okay. like it's one of my first art chats on my thankful art group on facebook so it's like a, mm -hmm. i don't know almost an hour long half hour probably okay. an hour long they could check that out um you know it to go more detail than i can right now mm -hmm. but um so about a thousand dollars an hour. I I add my my uh, time. I usually do by time, not by size, because a small canvas can take as much time as a larger canvas. Sometimes you know, depending on the subject and the the detail you're putting into it. So uh, generally, like if I'm but if I'm doing it for a show, I'll I'll kind of take an average of my times. So one painting, you know. Uh, putting a little bit of the burnt umber right here just to separate that out from his body a little bit down here too dark darken that up right there shadow that branch let's do a leg I'm gonna get the small brush here um okay then we gotta okay I, well I didn't answer the oh, question I'm sorry but I do my uh I do hourly uh a little bit of burnt umber to my gray here make it a little bit more brown for the leg um yeah i figure out my time and then i always add in my material cost and add it to whatever hourly wage that i've decided to pay myself you know so to start out with 10 to 15 dollars an hour is a is a good range for a beginner painter uh when you when you get to the you know, ultra professional, whatever you can expect to get a little bit more than that. Um, you know, murals and things, I think, uh, were closer to $50 an hour, 40 to $50 an hour. But, um, that was after I've been painting for, you know, 30 years. So, you, you know, you, you can't expect to get fine art prices when you're first starting out so just you know but i wouldn't undervalue yourself either i think that that it's more common to uh going with white here just to kind of highlight that foot that's wrapped around there um it's more common i think to undervalue yourself and 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 not charge enough so your time is valuable you know don't spend an you know 10 hours on a painting and charge fifty dollars or something because then you're not getting your time or your money out of your canvas either it's just not worth it you're not making minimum wage right exactly <laughs> you're not even making minimum wage yep okay going back in so i want a little bit darker here a little bit lighter where it's touching the body there and i might get a little bit of black here and just do the bottom of it with a little bit of black to make it show up a little bit better go oh he's so cute he looks like he's smiling i think that's why i like painting birds because they do they kind of have that little smiley faces they they look happy most of them <laughs> okay we got a question that okay. i still don't understand and she's asked it two different ways so okay <laughs> i apologize go for it. it says uh she made the bird show up better is that a color value or just color choices 
to make the bird show up the better. The value yeah. value um, and color are two different things. Some colors have have uh, co- values are are dark and light. So some colors like yellow is a very light value, and purple is a very dark value on the scale of light and dark. But they they're not uh, they're not interchangeable. You know, like um, so. Like you can look here, you know, you purple is going to start out as a as a dark value, whereas yellow is going to start out as a light value. You can get purple to be a light value by adding more white to it, but uh, you can't get pur- yellow to be darker unless you add like black or something like that. So um, you can you can choose colors. Like if I could have chosen a bright yellow to go around his face instead of adding white to it, and it would have done the same thing as adding the white to the blue did. If that makes sense, I think. So hopefully that answers that question. All right, I think I'm going to do some little white petals on this one. And I'm going to use my uh, angle brush here and just do some little small brush strokes. I'm setting it down and kind of pulling it towards the scent, towards the branch to create my little petals. And I don't think I'm going to do much more than that. I don't want to overdo it. And I'm going to grab some, let's grab a little bit of red and mix that with my yellow. Make kind of an orange color. And do some dabs in the center of this one with that. And then I'm going to put a few little buds of green starting up, but it's not going to be a lot of leaves like the other ones. These are just going to be like small buds. Do bright yellow with the green. It added a little bit of the orange I still had in my brush, so but I don't mind that. I'm going to add a little bit of white. And do some little tiny leafy things maybe dotting like that okay and I think I'm gonna do eh, let's do a little bit of it over here I'm trying to decide if I want to do something up in this corner but I don't think I'm going to I'm gonna wait till I get this other bird up here done and then I might decide to do something later uh, in there but I think I'm going to leave that I may want to do a little bit on this side here I'm going to use some of the quinacridone magenta and white just put in some color so it's actually not the just the quinacridone magenta in that corner or in that side and then let's add a little bit of the cadmium red and overlap it Whoop. keep it on the camera camera don't know if I was on camera before sorry if I wasn't for most of it for most of it okay for the important parts good So here's where I'm going to visually kind of blend it, but I'm not going to actually blend the colors at all. So I'm going to just dab over the top of that blue with my other color there. And then I can do the same thing with my blue over the top of the This is the ultramarine and phthalo blue mix. And just do a few of those dabs over the top. Gonna blend them. Here come the flowers. There we go. What? 
Let's see, and here come the flowers. <laughs> Boom, just like that. Now, uh, obviously, I was paying attention, but probably a lot of people in chat weren't. Did you explain how you just like zip, zap, zoop mm-hmm. those flowers on there? Yes, I did. Okay. I think, hopefully. <laughs> grab a little bit of the unbleached titanium with a little bit of that red. I'm going to just kind of add a little bit of a shadow to the center of some of those flowers a little bit. And, and then let's add a, just a little bit of yellow and we'll be done. And you're still using your half inch right. angle. Mm-hmm. A little bit of yellow dabs, dots. There. And when she says a little bit, I mean, that was like a little teeny dot. Right, <laughs> yeah. Hardly any paint on the brush. Yep. And I'm noticing this has a dark shadow right here under this knuckle, so I'm going to do that. All right, so here we go. Here's our three. You can zoom out now. It's our first three. I think they're going to look really fun. I'm so excited about this series. I've been seeing you guys painting these in the group. People have been sharing them. They look really great. Um, if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of red to this berry up here. You, know, like you could add a red berry if you really wanted to make sure that it, you know, but I don't think, I don't think we need to. I'm liking it. And then next week we'll do this one up here. This will be the bullfinch up here, and he'll be continuing like that. And I don't know if we need anything up here or not. I'm not sure yet, so we'll see. We may decide to add something to him next week, but I don't I don't think we need to. I don't want to make it too busy, so. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for joining us for another acrylic painting tutorial on a Tuesday night. And uh, happy birthday to Mark. Thank you. You didn't do your shout outs. Or your favorite Mark is. Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> You're too busy a teaching bunch of, people bunch how to of paint. People uh, adding their favorite Mark quotes to our mm. group <laughs> chat. So. Paint it like you stole it. I like that one. Paint it like you stole it. That's your favorite? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, my favorite obviously was the rooster the because rooster. we made put it on our t shirts on Teespring. The, yeah. <laughs> Caught you completely off guard with that one. You did. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> I couldn't paint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was fun. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great night, and we'll see you Saturday. We're going to be painting a lantern with some flowers. It'll be night, like a night, uh, nighttime scene with a lantern and fireflies and some flowers around the sides, kind of a summery, summer night scene. I think it'll be fun. Um, so hope you'll join us for that on Saturday and we'll see you then. Thanks. Bye.